Gentlemen, Taco Deck in the building! Give me a hell yeah. Yes! Yes! Fellas, first off, congratulations on your Tournament of Champions 15 victory. How does it feel to be champions? Amazing. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's yeah, we, um, we, we, we still have to explain this to everyone why we beat two Japanese bands. Not yet. So th that's something that I do want to talk about. So how did how did you guys did you guys started as a band and then at some point just decided to start doing reactions on YouTube and then it kind of went a certain direction or how, can you explain the process of going from a band to a very successful YouTube channel as well? Oh God, you wanna you wanna tell that story? Uh, I think I've told the story, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure. So yeah, I mean, uh, I think it was always kind of the goal to get the band, you know, self-sufficient and stuff like that. And we thought, hey, let's do YouTube. Maybe we can make a little bit of extra money here and there to kind of support the band. So uh, we actually originally started doing anime reactions, reactions to anime. We had this channel called Weeblet on Tree. And that was a whole like idea or whatever. And uh, Alan had the idea one day to he was like, "Hey, let's react to like anime music, like the music in While anime." I was stoned. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> and then one day he was just like, because we had two channels, we had you know the band's channel, and then we had the other the anime reaction channel. And he was just like, "Let's upload the anime reaction to the anime music reaction on the main channel and see how that goes." And uh, one video popped up, popped off. And, uh, yeah, I mean, once we saw that, we were just like, oh, okay, we, maybe we got something here. Yep. And then it just led to just doing a bunch of anime songs starting off. So we did, like, it's because I loved the music. It was Attack on Titan, I believe. Was yeah. The first song. Oh, no, like, Man, this my hero. My hero, too. Yeah, my hero. So we start off with Attack on Titan, and then he's like, oh, let me show you the Death Note opening. And yeah. he thought I was going to hate the song, and I ended up being one of my favorite Japanese bands now to this day, which is Maximum Hormone. Yeah, and, they're awesome. Uh, and I can't stop listening to the band. It's like it's really, really nostalgic for me. Like everything I love about like the new metal genre and like you know that that style or whatever. Like all in one, <laughs> one packaging. All the punk and hardcore and metalcore and just everything all in one. And I, and I was like, what is it? Because my first reaction was like, this is like almost like System of a Down ish. <laughs> and then it just like progressed into like. Oh no, they're much more than that. <laughs> this is the band's amazing. If if so, you uh, if you guys had to pick of all the bands that you have in the background behind you, Love Bites, uh Bandmade, Nemo, who who is the if they're in like a gauntlet against each other, I know people are gonna like probably not like your answer based on no matter who you say, but if you had to pick one who would you say is your favorite just based on musical, the music itself, not the band, the live show, the image, just based on music itself? Oh, just music itself. That's right. really tough. Do we include the quantity of music that they have out? I guess that is a factor because some artists have more, more material than others. So I can't even believe I'm about to say this right now, but I have to say bandmate just because of the quantity of music. If Maximum Hormone had equivalent to their discography, then I'd probably say Maximum Hormone was. Since Band May has so much music, and after, I mean, you said not to factor in live. It's so hard not to, but I have to say Band May now at this point because of the sheer amount of music that I put out. But musically, I'm more geared towards baby metal and Maximum Hormone. So that's why it's really, that's why I just say my top three are those three bands. But, um, I mean, right now, right now, my favorite is Bandmate because that's all I've been listening to. That's all I've been analyzing. That's all I've been breaking down, constantly going back to playing riffs, playing Sai Nakadori over and over again. Been working on covers for that. I'm working on like so many Bandmate covers, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um. So I have to say that, and it's mainly the just the pure discography, like how many songs they have. It's just it's insane amount, and it's all quality music. It's Great really, music. really but, impressive. They have, I don't, I don't think I've heard a bad song yet. I, I want to ask you some more questions about about your bandmate experience recently. But uh, Michaela is my co-host today. Michaela, the boys in, in Dyker Deck, do you have a question or two for them? And then, of course, I want to play your guys' music. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What would you say like the main influence is for you um, musically, like instrumentally wise? 
Well, for me, it's this is why we like Japanese music because our music, when we showed it to people here in El Paso, did not go over well because of the genre switching that we do. It's like so vast. And yes. my main influence was new metal. And new, if you okay. guys know, new metal changed a lot of genres, which I don't think people realize. Like System of Down is a great example. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. It was, I come, I'm come cut from the same new metal cloth, so I, I understand what you're saying for sure. Yeah, I don't think I realized it then or anybody else, but they actually swung through a lot of different genres. If you think about they did. it, like, absolutely. And, did. and then it just disappeared. And it, new metal went away, and then like with Japanese music, I'm like, oh my god, they're doing it like that, but better. <laughs> like, yes. so, and I just, yeah, just yeah. So for me, that's what it is. It was like I'm from that grunge era, new metal. I love the vocals and the lyrics from the grunge era and the, just the dirty fullness of the songs like Chris Cornell, um, Eddie Vedder, like all those classics, Nirvana, I'm a huge fan and I was a huge punk fan. So I have so many genres that I like instrumentally. So I'm very flexible with any musician, which leads to Eric, which he has more of like newer generation. Yeah. You want to tell him your <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, with him and new metal, it's me for like the emo side, like, you know, bands like My Chemical Romance, Civil Plan and stuff. It's all the stuff that I kind of grew up on. Did you, paint, it, did you paint your eyes at one point? I very uh, did you, like. Did you do the eyeliner? Did you ever do the eyeliner, bro? Like. No, oh. no. Well, <laughs> emo like face? But I never put on the eye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I did. I did at one point. Yeah. <laughs> I had long hair, but that's, that's pretty much. He it. was so pro when we did the bandmate cover because he just sat there and put on the eyeliner like no problem. Like, bro, have you done this before? And I'm over there going, ah, my eye. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it like this. You got to rub oh, it a little bit. Like, how can you do this with no problem? <laughs> that is hilarious. Hey, well, chat, ha chat has a question for you guys before I forget. It's coming from Repo Bob. He says, for Alan. When were when were you the most broken on stream, and why was it while you were reacting to Necronomital? Why was I the most broken? That's when what the it says. When, why were you why were you the most broken on stream <laughs> while reacting to Necronomital? All that moment, because the most broken oh, I've ever yeah. been, technically, was during um, when we were listening to Unseen World album, and it was near the end with Black Hole, where I just. My brain broke. But was there, was there like a tear up moment? Is that what he means? Uh, no, Necronominal was just a very like, in like intense and like weird ass fucking video. Like uh, neither of us could like oh, comprehend right. what the fuck was going on. Oh in yeah, that one. yeah, we just didn't know. We didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get it, and we were trying really hard. So what happens with Eric and I is when we don't get something, we try really hard with our brain, and sometimes it just it breaks along the way. <laughs> I don't know, for for breakdown like eye eyed moment it was uh, definitely uh, the Sakura Gakuin one of those. You you literally had to walk no. off camera like crying, <laughs> balls my, no. out fucking crying. <laughs> no, my biggest breakdown was um, Darren Gray. Darren down. Gray, oh yeah, that too. I, that song scares the shit out of me. I don't even listen to it because like the the rate <laughs> got out of me during that song. I can't even listen. To that. I'm thinking about it, like my eyes are swelling up. Like Ooh, like it just. Ah! I just remember that day so vividly it was like a 14 16 minute reaction yeah. it was just me pissed off <laughs> it did not end with the when the reaction ended too as soon as the camera went off he was still pissed like dude know, there was, was no so fucking <laughs> need for that there was no fucking need for that still going <laughs> like there's some i think they have with dimash too or like it was yeah. afterwards i'm still like going off about it <laughs> yeah dimash dude dimash could be, could be the best singer on the planet right now as far as range tell me about tell me about the the fox news interaction that you guys did with with bandmate what was it like meeting them in person did they recognize you and what just what did you what did you ask them like when cameras are off what did you guys ask them or talk about can you tell us any little tidbits oh man there, i can't say a lot about it let's just say like that day was one of the best worst days of my life because there's a lot of red tape that i was not aware about when dealing with corporate media and the inside networks of all that stuff. So to be on the safe side, I can't really say much about it. All I can say, like, it was an amazing experience, and I'm so grateful that happened. It is unfortunate I have to keep a lot of it to myself, and uh, that's the thing that's sad about it. But at the same time, it was a surreal experience that, like, I'll just hold in my heart and my memories. But 
Uh, that sucked. <laughs> there is a lot. That, yeah, there's a lot about that that sucked. Hopefully things get worked out in the end. We're still working on it, and I'm hoping to be able to say more. You'll be the first person I come on to tell you about it once I can say more about it. But um, all I can say, it was a great experience, and they did recognize us for like at other concerts, which was cool and uh, freaky at the same time because after doing that whole meetup, it, it felt not real. When it's like, I didn't just, that didn't just happen a day ago. It's like, oh, I can't wait to meet him. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, it was, it was weird, you know? That is amazing. Uh, it, went back to, it just went right back. You go right back afterwards. But it was crazy. And crazy we, time. But we learned a lot. We, say is I learned a lot that I didn't know because, you know, we're beginners at this stuff and the whole uh, networking with uh, dealing with bigger labels and news. I mean, I've done label stuff, but I guess uh, I've, always done it myself so it was my first time going through another entity and that's where i wasn't familiar with because i was so used to doing everything myself so like interviews like lady beer went smoothly because it was just a me to them connection with the management and stuff so so my advice for people moving forward deal with the management yourself never go through another third party that's for sure it's tricky that's that is uh being honest yeah we've jammed we've jammed phoenix a bunch and i i I do want to play this one but then after that i want to play some stuff that because John Paul, I originally did not know, was not anything to do with with the band normally. How did you link up with John? And uh, first of all, the song's amazing. But how did you guys link up with John originally? And uh, what was the thought process behind Phoenix? Well, I was um, John Paul's manager um, and ran his YouTube channel. So I filmed and mixed his channel. We grew it to about 100,000 subscribers before I left. So that was actually my first YouTube channel, technically. Uh, speaking of, I had joined him when he was at like 30K and then we worked on a plan and that's how I met him. So he's a phenomenal singer uh, that would do acoustic covers. So it'd help him with getting acoustic covers set up and we record and, uh, you know, video uh, videotape and record them in the studio. And then we release uh, covers and then we just uh, parted ways. But then afterwards, uh, we had lost our singer. He came in and he was actually uh, one of the singers with us and he did do that single and we weren't sure if he was staying on board 100 percent and he ended up not staying on board 100 percent. So that's why it says featuring John Paul after the fact. So are you uh, are you guys moving forward as an instrumental act or are you still on the hunt for a permanent singer? We are on the hunt for a permanent singer. We think we might have somebody, but we have worked with Vicky uh, Vivid Vision. She's like been the main singer like going for for majority of songs and i've been in serious vocal practice for about the past three years now um uh, with uh sam johnson who's my vocal coach so i'm hoping to take on a bigger part in the vocals mainly going forward and keeping it as a three-piece or four-piece group uh or there's a possible prospect with having vicky or mm-hmm. another female singer permanently coming on and we've been working with them constantly just trying to get vocals out so as you can see we have a lot of songs with various singers so pretty much we just link up with singers and get stuff out uh, that's how we were able to do that um that we that japanese ep that we put out which is just us covering a bunch of japanese songs like attack and titan digimon oh, baby yeah. metal uh band made and then maximum hormone we've done a couple covers of and uh forgot what we called it we call the uh, I japan i don't know. even i forgot what we named it already. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look here in a second, but let's let's jam Phoenix for maybe some people that that are are not familiar with your music. <laughs> My bad. Um, so, so we have like five of them. <laughs> cool. I, we'll take all of them. <laughs> I see, yep. I see your five hot sauces, and I raise you about eleven of my own, gentlemen. You get to pick the trivia yes. topic. Before we pick the trivia topic, though, uh, if someone if someone has never heard heard of you guys. And we and we can't choose Phoenix. We can't do a visual. Let's do some off Spotify. You're handing them the headphones. This is my band. Do you only get one like 30 second listen? What song are you playing for them? That's the next song I want to play for everybody watching. I need you. Try to. Uh, you're not gonna win. I would say. Oh yeah, that's a good. That's, that's our heavier stuff. Yeah. You're not gonna win. Yep. Yeah, you're not. Okay, I gotta look that one up real quick. It's on Spotify. There it is, right there. Before we play it, though, gentlemen, you get to pick the topic. What movie or TV show have you seen more than any? It does not have to be your favorite, but just what movie, which I think is an easier route to go because TV show is endless episodes, but what movie or TV show have you seen more than anything? If I ask you trivia on it, you will not get stumped. Should I call us out and let them know that we're, like, immune to hot sauce? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> we, drink, we 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 uh, add taco to our hot sauce. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> I got some hot ones too, so don't worry. <laughs> I was kidding. All right. So you said movies, yeah. movie or TV show? You get to pick though. Which one? Yeah, which right. one have you seen the most? Marvel movies. All right, let's do movies. Let's go. We're what, gonna, what, we're gonna what individual so. movie though? You get to pick the movie. Individual movie? Oh shit. Oh man. Think about just, it. Think about it for a second. Let's play. You're not gonna win. I want to hear right. the heavy stuff. You want to hear that? What's that? After this, I'll tell you the story behind this one. Okay. All right, fellas. Here we go. Your first trivia: Avengers Endgame. They start off easy and they get hard. Okay. Which no, hero no. is the first hero to realize the stones are not in the Infinity Gauntlet when the Avengers first confront Thanos? That's not oh, easy. Shit. <laughs> That's not easy? Fuck. I'm gonna go... Uh, I saw you, man. Yeah. This is the first hero to realize there are no stones in the Infinity Gauntlet when the Avengers first confront Thanos. Oh. Yeah, was it Hulk or Bruce Hulk. Banner? That is incorrect. Gotcha, <laughs> Fellas, enjoy the hot sauce. Enjoy the hot sauce. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a random I'm gonna pick a random song of yours to play next. Oh, tell me the quick backstory behind that one. Oh, so the beginning is my grandfather. It's about my grandfather. He suffered from. He was uh, schizophrenic and he had passed away. And those are old. That's an old tape recording of him because he saw people outside in his yard that weren't there. So that's what he's talking about. He's talking about taking them to court and stuff. And that's where the name "You're Not Gonna Win" is coming back. So it's about <laughs> him fighting an illness. So by the end of the song, it goes into this clean, like happy place kind of thing. Where because they call it uh, forget what they call it, where they all of a sudden they come back. There's a name for it. I can't remember it. Uh, where they're completely normal and they're fine. Yeah, for for a short amount of time. Works. Yeah, yeah. So like, and that's what the song is written around. It's written around that. And it was crazy because I took that tape recording and then I just wrote that guitar riff to him talking. Wow. And it just happened to fit magically over it. And I'm sorry yeah, so for I'm sorry for your loss. First off. Oh, it was it was it was yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, it was like. Uh, I remember showing my grandma. She like cried. <laughs> She's like, "What? How would you do this?" <laughs> Put it together. Wait, are we chugging this or <laughs> just do some, a big old a big old gulp? I'll do some with you. I'll do some Sydney screaming chili sauce, but uh, just take a big old gulp. The answer, by the way, was uh, was Rocket Raccoon. Uh, the gauntlet nah, is yeah. fused to Thanos' hand, and he refuses. He uses the stones to destroy, destroy themselves. Rocket turns it over to reveal there are no stones in the gauntlet. That's when oh, Thor. Wow. That's when Thor cuts his head off. You're gonna be weak and do red hot. Yeah. What? Come on. There you go. <laughs> Michaela, do you have another question for for Eric or Alan? Um. Cheers. Favorite band. Favorite band currently. Like favorite new music you guys are into. Ooh. What? I've been listening to a band called uh, Bad Omens. I've been really, oh, yeah. really like stuff. Hell yeah. I saw Bad Omens, Bad Omens open for like, I don't even remember who they opened for. This was like four or five years ago, maybe like four years ago. Maybe not even that long. It was like right before COVID, so maybe like two and a half years ago. At like a small 200 person venue. They were like the second or third band on and they stole the show. I literally thought I was watching the next Bring Me the Horizon when I was watching them. And, uh, uh Ni nicest guys ever and now they're ginormously super huge but uh yeah i wanted to go see them in phoenix but their whole tour was sold out i was like god damn <laughs> them boys them boys are busy killing it killing it what do you what do you guys have coming up that you're allowed to tell us about regarding the band with some stuff maybe in 2023 another single um just what are you allowed to tell us about well um eric's coming out with his own only fans with his feet, feet awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, we recently got our, our drummer back, and um, he he had taken some time off for himself, and uh, we're we're hitting it back hard. So hopefully, some more singles coming out soon. So. The goal is January, where the yeah. next single will be out. But it's gonna be like a full EP. We're just gonna release it, probably one a week, uh, when that happens. We haven't gotten the dates, but the goal is get five songs at least minimum. 
uh, like our last EP and just uh, release one a week and then bam, we'll have a new EP out. And then uh, after that, just keep going hard because uh, we haven't, we're pretty good about releasing music, but we like, we know all the craziness going on. So now we're just getting back into it. And now that everything's coming to like fruition when like reinventing the band and stuff, um, it's looking like January is going to be the new stuff that's going to be coming out. So that's our, the goal at least. Do you, do you guys DIY most of your stuff or do you have a particular per producer that you go to for like that you bring the demos to 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 clean everything up? Well, on the uh, the last Stan EP that we did, we actually got that one mixed and mastered by uh, some dude in uh, what was it? The, the EP was um, so I produced mixed and sent it off to uh, another guy who does an extra mix and master on it. What's I forgot his name. Wow. Um, but like all the songs after that, I mixed and mastered all those, yep. all the ones going in after that. And we did it here in this trailer that we're in. <laughs> studio. Studio. Yeah. Sorry. Studio. Awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I'm going to queue up one more, one more trivia question, but let's, let's jam one more, you got one more of your guys' songs. Uh, toss out one more that you'd like us to play today. That something we've never heard before. Oh, man. This one doesn't have to be the heaviest one. Just something that you're proud of that you want us to, to definitely check out. Uh, orthodoxy? Orthodoxy? All right, yeah. You kind of see the range. Yeah, yeah, I see the range of what we do. Orthodoxy? There's a music video for the James Bond parody uh, for Orthodoxy. You know I got to see that. That was fun. That took like two 17-hour days to finish that whole video. Really? Was it? Did you guys shoot it yourself, or did you hire a particular person? We have our friend Hector that uh, we <laughs> hired. Uh, he's a friend of ours. that He also plays bass on some of the covers that we did uh so yeah we filmed it with him hell yeah shout out to hector gentlemen in the avengers end game what game are tony and nebula playing to pass time while stranded in space oh god is that fucking what's it called like we're we're flicking the little paper thing oh the football thing yeah like I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll accept it i'll accept Give it me a hell yeah. paper football Oops. All right. We'll take it. Painful tattoo. So landed on painful tattoo. Do you gentlemen, I, I see Alan, you have a bunch of tattoos. Eric, do you have any tattoos? If so, are you guys willing to show us your most painful one? I have no tattoos. What? What the f Why not? <laughs> Why don't you have tattoos there? It's a long and personal story, which I don't feel like. Which, wait, you guys got like two hours? <laughs> no, but <laughs> no. Yeah. Give me the short version. Short version. Uh, well, I don't like sharing it that much, but it, well, basically, like a long time ago, I knew that I wanted to do music full time and stuff like that. And I was like a very like religious guy growing up. So I like kind of like made a deal with like God. I was like, look, if I don't drink, if I don't smoke, if, like I don't do drugs, I won't get tattoos, I won't get piercings, anything like that, anything that could be, you know, take me off this path. If I do that, can like I want to, you know, be have a music career and like be successful in music i respect like it i respect it body is a temple i respect it can't hate on that alan alan what's your most painful one? Oh god i guess i guess it'd be up here on the shoulder blade when they kept drilling in over and over again Ooh. on here because i felt it in my jaw but i, I want to say it's painful though i don't know a good question actually you know my calf was probably the most painful i don't know why I thought I thought my calf was sucked too. That was that was like the third spot I ever got. And that one is like, up, up. It's just there. like your muscle and you're just like driving it in there. So <laughs> I just wanted one right here. I, I, people say those are like the worst ones to get. No, it's not. Trust me. No, no I have my hands completely tied. It is not the to me this this area like right in here where you have like no meat in your chest. Oh yeah. That spot sucks. Anything Oof. on the bone just sucks. Like, that's what I felt like when they hit the blade. I'm like, I felt it all the way up to the top of my skull. I'm like, that's not yeah. where you're tattooing. <laughs> Those are not fun. Uh, fellas, we only have time for like one or two more questions. We'll make them serious. Uh, Michaela, hit him with your final question, and then I'll ask you, you guys my final question, and we'll let you go. 
Um, goals for 2023, Dicodec. Good question. Releasing that EP. Yeah. Uh, that's the uh, releasing that EP and uh, putting out more content on YouTube and uh, just uh, continuing to grow and be better at what we do. Get those hundred K subs finally. So yeah. to, to to roll off to roll off his question. So let's say January the goal is hit. Beyond beyond January, additional goals. Uh, get back on, do a tour. Yeah, uh, you know, touring. and hopefully, you know, wean out the YouTube stuff and focus full time on making music again. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's the main goal is like to do music full time and do, and pull off doing YouTube at the same time, you know. And then uh, bring people on the journey and adventure when we do go on tour. Like, that's the kind of whole idea when we do do that, um, is do, like, in-depth videos when we do get up back out on the road <clears throat> also. It's a good plan. I'm excited about January, man. You guys got me juiced up. My final, my final question for you, though, is uh, what is a piece of, and I ask almost everybody that we have on the show this final question, what is a, a piece of musical advice at some point, sometime in your career, somebody has told you that was a complete like game changer for you personally, just made you take a career more seriously, or a terrible mistake you made, maybe not in this band, but a prior band, or it could be in Daiko Deck that you do not want any starting up band to make. You first, sir. Um, so I uh, had the privilege of speaking to the guitarist from Nothing More. Uh, and he told me, he was just like, focus on the songwriting and like get that craft down and the rest will just, you know, naturally flow. So once I heard that, I was like, yeah, I mean, you do need that quality. It really kind of changed my perspective on everything. So you wrote okay. differently until you spoke to him and then he made you look at your music more seriously and and step up your game as far as your writing goes is what you're saying yeah absolutely um like before songs were just like you know riff salad like just a bunch <laughs> of riffs together now like i actually have to think about okay like what can i add here to make this a song very cool it makes sense alan same question man I don't even know. I'm so like messed up. I don't know why I pour so much mango habanero down my throat. Like I'm <laughs> yeah. feeling like crazy ass burning. I don't know why I just kept it there holding there. Um uh, don't up. Uh, just keep going. Learn from the mistakes. Learn from other people's mistakes. That's the biggest thing. Um and even if you feel like you were aware of mistakes, you're still gonna make them anyways. It's just part of the process. Um just don't give up. Cause it is a we've been two thousand fourteen constantly just been grinding at this so it just um it takes years it, it could take 10 years like that's like the average time i think for a band to actually hit anywhere and i think that's the biggest thing is just resilient and keep it going i love it i love it gentlemen i appreciate you doing this thank you guys so much uh i look forward to the to the interview i hope it works out with fox news we are excited about january some new daiko deck music coming our way that we can jam and show our friends and family that's awesome and uh, I'm jealous of your man-made connections that I don't have. But uh, I appreciate you guys. You guys are nothing but scholars and gentlemen. Thank you so much for real. Thank you. Hey, we thanks appreciate for having, having us. us. Yeah, yeah, thanks for oh, having yeah. us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Congratulations on winning the Tournament of Champions 15. Ladies and gentlemen, Tiger Deck! Give me a hell yeah! Are you guys going live later today? Uh, are you guys going no. live later today? We could. We could. I'm, I'm down. I'm down. So we're done in about in about 40, 45 minutes. If so, we'd be more than happy to raid you. If not, we'll save it for another day. Okay, awesome. Man. Excellent. You have a good one, all right? Cool. Cheers, fellas. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.